I'd like to welcome you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come to Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to look at verses 5 through 11 over the next couple of days. Uh, in these verses is a topic that we don't like to talk about much anymore, but it is a topic that is in the Word of God. And it is a topic that we are going to address, and, address, and that is the chastening of the believer. And what we see in this verse is that chastening is evidence of the Father's love for us. So let's read for, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 11, and then we'll begin our study on this passage of Scripture today. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So today where I want us to look at mostly is the fact of the people who are chastened, and we see that in verses 5 through 8. Notice in verse 5 it tells us that the ones who are chastened are sons. It says, And if ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. The word for chastening here is paridia, which is used for the whole training and education and discipline of children, for correcting mistakes and curbing passions. The word does not have the idea of punishment, but rather corrective measures to eliminate evil. And uh, the Bible makes it very clear that God will do that with his children. So when I experience the chastening hand of God, it is not because God hates me, but rather it is because God loves me. And furthermore, it is proof that I belong to him. If I can do those things that are contrary to God, and I do not experience the chastening hand of God, as we're going to see in just a moment, that ought to be cause of concern for me. That ought to bring me to the place that I stop and ask myself, am I truly, genuinely born again? Has there been a time and has there been a place in my life that I have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior? God the Father loves us so much that as his children, he will chasten us when we are in need of chastening. And that is to correct mistakes in life, to, cur uh, to curb passions that are misguided and to bring us in the line with what his will for our lives are. And that's what verses 6 and 7 tell us. They tell us that those loved of the Lord are the ones that are chastened. It says, For the wh whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Um, in light of those verses... I encourage you to write down Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, which is where the quote is that we find in Hebrews chapter 12. Notice what it says in Proverbs 3, verses 11 and 12. It says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he, cha he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delayeth. So, uh, as I say, it's a good thing when we receive that chastening hand of God, because God is removing from our life any impurities that is there, and he is removing any desires that are wrong, and he's bringing us into alignment and into accord with his will and with his desire for our lives. And verse 7 of Hebrews 11 says, If you endure chastening, God dealeth with, with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Back in Job chapter 5, I believe it is, and in verse 17, if my memory is serving me correct here, it says, Behold, happy is the 
man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. So here we see that, that the um, correction of God not only leads to happiness or holiness, but it leads to true happiness in the life of a child of God, and that we should not despise the chastening of the Lord. Now that word despise, uh, you know, literally means we think of something we despise. It means something that we hate. And we certainly should not hate God's chastening. He is doing it to us for a reason, and it is for our good. Uh, but also, that word despise not thou can carry with it the idea of do not regard lightly the chastening of the Lord. You know, when God is chastening you, don't just simply brush it off and say, ah, it really doesn't matter, and I'm going to do my own thing. No, friends, do not regard lightly the chastening of the Lord, but rather be at that place that you take it seriously and that you correct those things that God is dealing with you about. And then we see in verse 8 that bastards are not chastened. It says in Hebrews 12, verse 8, For if ye with, be without ch chastisement, whereof all are partakers, that is, all who are the children of God, then are ye bastards and not sons. So if, if I do not face the chastening hand of God in my life, regardless of what I do, you can mark it down according to this verse, that anyone who is in that situation is an illegitimate child. They are children of Satan, and they are not children of God, because God chastens those who are his. Now, let me just give you a couple of examples of God's chastening hand uh, in the time that we have left today. Um, if you look in Genesis chapter 20, you will find that Abraham experienced the chastening of God. He almost lost Sarah when he denied that she was his life. And uh, also, the chastening hand of God in the life of Abraham is seen in Genesis chapter 16, when Abraham brought sorrow into his life, and not only his life, but the whole Jewish nation, when he fathered Ishmael by Hagar. And we know that God, that was not God's plan. That was not God's desire. And not only then, in the life of Abraham, but to this day, that that has caused headache and heartache in the lives of the nation of Israel. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, you will see that David brought chastisement upon himself and upon others when he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Friends, it is sad that Christians continue to think that they can uh, sin against God and not be chastised. The Bible makes it very clear, friends, that if you belong to him, that he loves you, that he desires what is best for you, and that he will chastise you when he has to in order to get your attention, in order to correct you, and in order to curb any desires that you have that are contrary to the will of God and the word of God. And he will bring chastisement into your life. And as I've said earlier, if you have been playing the religion game, but you're able to do whatever you want to do, and you're not receiving the chastening hand of God in your life, let me encourage you to get in the will of God, in the Word of God and ask God to reveal Himself to you. Ask God to reveal where you stand with Him, because I can guarantee it, friends, if you can live any way you want to live and not experience the chastening hand of God in your life, then there's a very good chance that you are not one of His, that you are not a child of God, and I encourage you today Repent of your sin, trust the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, and uh, allow him to give you that eternal life that only he can bring. And understand that as a child of God, when you experience that chastening, it is not because God hates you. It is not because God is out against you. It's because we've got things that are destructive in our life that are contrary to the nature of God, contrary to the will of God, and God will do what is necessary in order to remove those things, those desires, those sins from our life that we might be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is what is best for us, and it's what is best for the testimony and the reputation of the Lord Jesus Christ, for we, we must understand that we... Um, are the ones who represent him in this world. And uh, we want to give people a good understanding of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for them. And let's pray that our testimonies are soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Have a good day.